Today we're in the modern to play some Chalice of the Void Ether Vial Soldiers, trying to find out if some of the new additions from Brothers War and Dominary United are actually good enough to have a place in a format as strong as modern. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffrodolive, and it's time for another edition of Much Abru About Nothing. And this week, we are heading to Modern to play some Chalice Vile Soldier. So, Soldiers obviously got a lot of new cards recently from Dominar United and the Brothers War. Can some of these new additions join with some powerful old cards and lock pieces to make a new Tribal Modern deck? That's what we're going to find out today. So let's talk about the deck, jump into some games, see it in action. So we start with the Chalice and the Vile. These are the two non-land, non-soldier cards in our main deck. So Ether Vile just lets us sneak stuff into play, speeds up the deck, a great ramp spell. All of our creatures are one, two, or three mana. So mostly we hopefully play this early, drop a one drop and a two drop into play, and then get it up to three where we can cheat things into play at instant speed. Chalice of the Void is kind of weird in this deck. So it's absurd in some matchups. If we run into the Cascade decks like Rhinos or Living End, this is our best card. Also really good against like, is it Mark Tide? Some the prowess decks that are really built around one mana plays at the same time our deck also has a bunch of one drops we got champion of the parish we got esper sentinel which are some of our better soldiers so it's a little awkward to like chalice on one on turn two and then lock a bunch of our deck out of the game however in a perfect world we ether vial first and then chalice and then we can still cheat our one drops into play uh, so that is the chalice vial part of the deck as far as soldiers along with our one drops we get a bunch of taxing soldiers i would see the reason to play soldiers over another similar ether vile tribal deck is we get some really good disruption lavinia really good against tron also really good against free spells shuts down like evoking of elementals which is really nice thalia texas is a spell decks unsettled mariner really good at protecting our stuff just everything essentially has ward one but also protects our face which is relevant as well so these soldiers just help keep our board safe help slow down our opponent's deck and give us time to get our payoffs on the battlefield which valiant veteran payoff number Number one, just a two mana soldier lord, really big addition to the tribe, since the tribe just hasn't had a two mana lord before. So this speeds up our clock a lot. And then Siege Veteran, so good. Puts counters on things, also protects us from wrath a bit. If our stuff dies, we get some soldier tokens to replace it. And that's really the core of the deck. Otherwise, Brutal Gathar gives us some removal on a soldier body, mana base, cavern to fight through counters, Muta Vault, more soldiers, and then pretty typical modern stuff. As far as the sideboard, we get a bunch more soldiers, Harbin to swing over ground blockers, Sky Strike Officer, card run grindy matchups, Core Firewalker, really good against burn, Cathar Commando, removal for artifacts and enchantments. Otherwise, some removal, some hate for Indomitable Creativity, Reanimator and Hollowed Moonlight, rest in peace for graveyards. And that is Chalice Vile Soldiers for Modern. That's our Much of deck for today. So let's jump into some games and see if the Soldier Tribe, of all things, actually can compete in a format as strong as Modern. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it. It, I'll be back in a bit for the wrap-up. Need some Phyrexia All Will Be One cards? Well, you can snag them from our awesome sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash MTG Goldfish. All right, much about nothing time. We are heading to modern this week to play some Soldier Stompy, essentially, essentially uh, Soldier Tribal. We're seeing if the new standard cards, can they find their way back to modern? If you already got a standard soldiers, you have some percentage of this deck. Yeah, let's just Hollowed Fountain, get the blue mana, get down the Aether Vial, pass the turn. Opponent's like a hero deck, so could be Control, could be Elementals, could be some five color pile. Land, well, let's take up the Vial. So many Champion of the Parish. Uh, all right, Champion of the Parish, go. I mean, this is kind of an aggro start. We can Violent Champion of the Parish, Violent Champion, play a third Champion, Violent Thalia. Just go beatdowns, passes, well, Vile. What is our opponent thinking about? Are they killing Champion? Okay, they're gonna kill the Champion. We get to put a Champion into play. Untap, take up Vile, play a Champion of the Parish. Wow, if we could have kept all of our champions, we'd be in such amazing shape. Ether Vile. Put in the Thalion now. Gotta get that tax going. And I mean, here comes the beatdowns. Here comes the beatdowns. Seems like a reasonable start against control, although we are on one land. <laughs> We're leaning super hard on this vial. Opponent. 
Oh my goodness, solitude pitching, solitude. Always a free spell to come and ruin our day. All right, free spell, untaps, plays a land. We would like to draw land, opponent, Rafine's tower tapped. I mean, how many solitudes can they have? They just pitched a solitude to a solitude. Opponent passes, well, well, the question is, do we put Lavinia into play? Probably not. Yeah, let's just tick up. Ooh, draw a Valiant Veteran. Go to combat. Opponent. Leyline Binding. Going after the Thalia. Well, okay. Put the Siege Veteran into play. There's probably an argument to doing it pre-combat to get an extra counter out of it. Opponent has had a lot of answers. I mean, I guess that is, that is what blue white control wants to do. The removal of modern is kind of absurd these days. March otherworldly light, solitude, ley line binding. We had what I thought was a really good start for this matchup, but our opponent is just killing it all. And now we're a little bit locked out of doing anything since we don't have lands. Opponent, to very. Bounces Champion of the Perished. Pretty annoying, and a Hall of the Storm Giants. Okay, we untap. Vile, staying on three. How about a land, Magic Gods? Well, there's a land, finally. I mean, we probably gotta kill the Teferi. So play the land. Hilariously, it's a colorless land. Yeah, replay Champion of the Perished. Put a counter on Champion of the Perished. Kill the Teferi. I mean, we're trying. We're trying real hard. Opponent taps. Four cards in hand. Castle Ventress. There's a question if we're going to put this Brutal Cathar into play. Shark Typhoon is a thing. I guess it's probably better to wait. So keep the Vial on three. Uh, Valiant Veteran. All right, go to combat. Counter on the Champion of the Perished. So we're hoping our opponent is trying to Shark Typhoon to block, and then we can put the Brutal Cathar into play. Yes, okay, this worked out exactly how we were hoping. So opponent, shark, but we get to ether vial. Put the Brutal Cathar into play. Our plan of waiting ended up working out wonderfully. Get rid of the shark. Hit you for seven, for eight? All right, it comes down to this. Like, this is, this is a game. Our opponent needs a wrath, and they might need to get rid of the, the siege veteran First, if our opponent rasps without killing the siege veteran, we get a pretty big board of tokens. Like we're still not in the worst shape. Okay, there's the wrath. So that's not great, but we do get three soldiers, which is a way to try to rebuild. Passing. I don't even know if we want to draw lands anymore. Probably not. Ooh, siege veteran. Ether vial. Put a siege veteran into play. Fire up the muta vault. Go to combat. Counter on the muta vault. Hitchia. All right, hit you to two, pass the turn. So now our opponent has to deal with the board and the Muta Vault. Oh my goodness, are we taking down the control deck? Are we taking down the control deck? Oh my goodness, they scoop it up. Okay, soldier power. Wow, two lands, two lands through all the removal in the world. What do we have that's good against all the removal in the world though? Hollow Moonlight, not for this matchup. Well, I guess maybe a better question is what do we have that's bad in this matchup? Chalice of the Void is probably our worst card. If you look at a blue white control deck, I don't think because of how their removal works, I guess they're just playing Triomes to reduce the, the cost on Leyline Binding. If you look at a typical modern control deck, like this one, for example, so much of the removal, Leyline Binding, it's one mana, but technically it's not one mana. It's actually five, six mana value. Prismatic ending, often one mana, but higher mana value. So I don't think Chalice does enough. All that to say, I don't think Chalice actually does that much. So we're gonna go down the Chalices. Sky Strike Officer seems nice. A way to draw cards is always uh, always good. Firewalker, no. March, no. I mean, maybe we just bring in, I guess Flash is not a horrible mechanic against control. Maybe something like that. A Little bit more action, little less chalice -y. There are matchups where chalice is really good. This just is, <laughs> is not one of them. Sands a little land heavy, but I do like ether vial. We have the best planes ever. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we mulligan this hand. Celestial colonnade. Oh, flooded Strahan, crack it. Brutal Cathar's a little hit or miss. Grab the hollowed fountain, get down the ether vial. Brutal Cathar, I mean, it did something last game. Well, his opponent just passing. Wow. Opponent apparently kept a one lander. That's greedy. Ooh, 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 ooh. That we like. Okay, so Cavern of Souls on Human. Oh my God, I'm an idiot. Should not have said human. Well, I guess that still works. Sure said soldier, but <laughs> technically it still works. Let's Esper Sentinel, which is a 
pretty good draw here. I mean, I think all of our creatures are technically human, so, <laughs> so this is actually kind of fine. Let's see if our opponent accidentally skipped their turn or if they really somehow kept a one lander with their control deck. Are they trying to discard a hand size? What's going on? Who? What control deck keeps the one lander? Okay, there's the Mystic Gate uh, opponent. Cannot pay for both. So we're gonna get to draw a card at least, which is nice. So we gotta pay for the Unsettled Mariner. So we get to draw with Esper Sentinel. Champion of the Perished, sure. Okay, so I think what we do is we untap. Before we tick up Vile, we put Champion of the Perished into play. Now we can tick up Vile. Play the Mute of All, run out a Siege Veteran. Did you know? Little little quirk of the magic rules here. Um, yeah, I guess we just put it on the Unsettled Mariner. Get in for as much damage as possible. Did you know? So this is a hilarious, a hilarious rule uh, of Cavern of Souls that I recently learned about. So when Cavern of Souls first came out, the rule was if you did not explicitly say you were making colored mana, the default was it was generic mana. So in this scenario, if we just like tap three lands and cast Siege Veteran, uh, in paper and moto we have to choose, like by default we have to choose, but in paper, if we just tapped our lands and cast Siege Veteran, our opponent could counter it and be like, you did not explicitly say you made white mana or blue mana uh, with, with the cavern. <laughs> that was the actual the actual rule of that era. Well, we'll take up the Ether Vial. Valiant Veteran. Wow, we're probably just going for it. So what's the worst thing that happens? The worst thing that happens is they untap and wrath us. Oh no, there is a reason not to put it on human, which is exactly Valiant Veteran. Valiant veteran. Watch us get got because of that cavern pun. Gonna counter it? Counters. No, play the Muta Vault. Fire up the Muta Vault. Put a counter on the Muta Vault. Hit you for a bunch. Maybe this is just a great matchup. I feel like even if our opponent rasts here, they die, right? <laughs> even if they go land wrath, I think they just lose. Opponent, Scalding Tard. Cracks it down to six. Like they wrath. We get two tokens, we have the Muta Vaults, we can put the Brutal Cathar into play, like, wow, it is a tap land. All right, opponent, show us something pretty good, I guess. Or just die, we're fine We're fine with that as well. Against a control deck, well, <laughs> wow, an opponent scoops it up. So our opponent somehow missed that, <laughs> that turn one, which did not help them, but that was a pretty good performance for the soldiers. Always feels good to be control. Always feels good when it happens. Well, all right, good start, sweet, sweet. Much brew about nothing time. We are soldier stomping in modern. And I mean, I think we keep this. We might as well. Four lands is a lot. We do have the ether via, which is nice. Well, we will see. Yeah, let's just cavern here. Cavern on soldier. Soldier, we're playing soldiers, not humans and run out the ether vial, go. Well, let's see what our opponent's up to. Arid Mesa, ooh, getting burned. This is a matchup where Chalice actually can do some serious work. Not burn, prismatic ending. Well, let's champion of the perished. Hollowed fountain tapped. So maybe our opponent's like, Jeskai control? Steam vents, untapped. Oh, okay. Well, we know what our opponent's doing. Indomitable creativity -ing. Yeah, Fortified Beachhead, reveal the Brutal Cathar, Brutal Cathar, snipe the crab. Ugh. All right, opponent has a bolt for the Brutal Cathar. Oh, that means the crab lives too. We can't attack. Uh-oh. Yeah, what do we do about Indomitable Creativity? Flooded Strand, that is not going to be the card that saves us. Uh, one, two, and three, Brutal Cathar. Let's try this again. Unfortunately, there's still a clue. Oh my god. Oh no! Day and night, so... <laughs> to all this mechanic. We'll pass the turn and die. Oh, yeah, I guess we should have we should have known there's a door in my I mean, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Even if we had sniped the crab, they still they would solve the clue. Oh, don't it. Literally can't beat it. Scoop it up. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Hollow Moonlights. A. Eh? What can we do against this deck? This is another one. Does Chalice even do anything? Do we live in a world where Chalice is bad? I hate to even think that, but that might be the world we live in. Do we bring in rest in pieces? Do we just try to go as aggro as possible? I mean, I guess Chalice shuts down removal, but I mean, I guess we just gotta hope we have the creativity in hand. Ooh, especially since they're on the protection plan. Brutal Cathar does not, does not answer our opponent's stuff. I mean, Thalia's good. 
good. If no mana was spent to cast it, I don't think this really applies. Creativity just puts things into play, right? You're not casting it. I mean, the commandos might be all right. Yeah, let's get on the chalices. Go down the Lavinia's. Run it like that. I mean, so I guess we try to be aggro and have a hollowed moonlight. Not the fastest hand I've ever seen. I think we mulligan. Four lands, not gonna get it done. I mean, this is this is something. Probably put an ether vial to the bottom. But Sentinel and Thalia, that's that's some disruption. Yeah, we'll keep. Put a vial to the bottom. Uh yeah, let's just planes and ether vial go. Aired Mesa. Passes. Take up the vial. So many Brutal Cathars. Hopefully they do something. Yeah, run out the Thalia. Uncounterably, thank you, Cavern. Yeah, I mean, I think we just put the Esper Sentinel into play too. Well, if our opponent tries to do things, we get to draw cards and tax them. <laughs> opponent cracks the Arid Mesa. Gets the tap land. Our clock is not super fast at the moment, though. Our clock is only, what, three a turn? That's a lot of time for our opponent to get a creativity. A Lord would be nice. Drawing a Lord would be super helpful. Just to, uh, just to increase the clock a bit, opponent mount in and passing. Eh, well, taking up the vial. Fortified Beachhead, eh? Well, go to combat, hit you for three. And yeah, let's just Beachhead tapped, or untapped, pass the turn. Not gonna run out of Brutal Cathar. Doesn't seem worth it just to put a body on the battlefield. We know our opponent has targets, like they probably have Fable the Mirror Breaker. We saw the hard evidence. Sacred Foundry, untapped, again passing. Well, Vile going up to three. Instant Speed Brutal Cathar is nice. Well, I mean, go to combat, hit ya. All right, opponent's gonna lightning bolt the Thalia. Pay the one. Clock slowing. Opponent down to 13. <laughs> Chipping away, a little off the top. Just a little off the top. Play the Harbin past the turn. I mean, maybe chalices are worth it to stop the bolts. It doesn't stop ley line bindings though, or prismatic endings. So many of these expo removal spells just seem to make uh make chalice not as I mean not as good as it used to be for sure. When the world was like fatal push, lightning bolt, path to exile. When that was the main removal, chalice actually pretty good. All right, Dwarven mine. Are we going for it? Hopefully. Uh, instead, opponent's gonna play to fairy. Pay the one. K. Okay. Bounce what? I mean, we're definitely gonna brutal Cathar. Bounce the Harbin. All right, Ether Vial. Put a brutal Cathar into play. Get rid of the token. Vile stays. Oh, well, Siege Veteran's not horrible. I guess, yeah, I think we run it out. Let's run out the Siege Veteran. Go to combat, counter on the Esper Sentinel, increase the tax, kill the Teferi, hit our opponent. Down to 11. Yeah, it'd be nice to leave Teferi alive, it's just so risky. Opponent being able to instant speed creativity is, is not something we really want to deal with. Dwarven mind number two. Creativity. Well, I mean, the question is, do they have a lightning bolt? We got the Brutal Cathar. Opponent. Oh, they do. Oh, all right, yeah, so we get a soldier, but I think this means we lose because we just we can't. Yeah, we literally do not have a card that can beat us here, Emissary. You and creatures you control have protection from the chosen card type. Uh, yeah, well, we'll scoop it up. We just, we don't have an answer. Oh, that is unfortunate. We had, we had the, the Brutal Cathar to try to answer, but our opponent had the answer back. Not this time. Much brew by nothing time. We are playing some soldier stompy and hopefully this chalice is good. Scalding tarn for our opponent. Yeah, let's meet of all ether vial. So if this is Merc Tide, then chalice is like relatively good. All right, there's a ledger shredder. And there's the conniving. We should be able to get down Chalice. Can we beat what our opponent already has going on? That's another question. But it cracks a bobble, takes a peek, passes. Well, take up the vial. Play the planes. Vial in Esper Sentinel. Chalice on one. Pass the turn. I mean, opponent's like is a lot of one drops. This chalice should really slow them down. Drawing a brutal Cathar would be helpful. Opponent, press of iteration. That can be resolved even through even through the chalice. Opponent pays a one. All right, exiles a spell snare. So opponent's trying to get enough cards in the graveyard to Merc Tide. Opponent passes. Yeah, brutal Cathar would be spectacular. Take up the vial. 
Ooh, Thalia is not the worst. Let's play a Mita Vault. Play a Siege Veteran. Violin the Thalia. Put a counter on the Esper Sentinel. Hit you for two. No Merc Tides. No Merc Tides. It wouldn't be the biggest Merc Tide if our opponent Merc Tide here, though. There's only one instant or sorcery in the graveyard at the moment. Okay. So opponent's just trying to get spells in the graveyard. We draw another Thalia. And here comes the Merc Tide. Yup. All right. How about a Brutal Cathar? Brutal Cathar. That's a 5-5. Five, five. Opponent gets in, hits us. Brutal Cathar probably wins us the game. Now Vile going up to three. Oh, and it's a Brutal Cathar. Okay, that is what we wanted. So, Aether Vile. Put the Brutal Cathar into play. Snipe the Merc Tide. And opponent scoops it up. Okay, that was a really nice draw. That was clutch. That was clutch. Things are looking a little grim there, but uh, Brutal Cathar off the top for the save. Is it Merc Tide? What do we want from our sideboard? So that was, we had been talking about the first couple matches, like, ah, oh, how good is, how good is Chalice? Is it not good anymore? Well, we found the Chalice matchup. Chalice, absurd against our opponent's deck. Hits most of their creatures. Hits most of their, it's just like really good. The question is, so what's bad. Thalia's good. Chalice is good. Brutal Cathar's necessary. Siege Veteran's fine. Lavinia can go. It hits Mishra's Bobble, but that's basically it. Go down Lavinia. Rest in Peace is really nice. Rest in Pieces can come in. Anything else we want to change? Could bring in like March of Otherworldly Light to deal with some of the other creatures. Do we just want all the rest in pieces? It is really nice. Could still get snowballed by Ragavan, but... Maybe something like this. Actually, what about Core Firewalker? That's probably worth it too. What else can we cut though? Maybe a Valiant Veteran? Yeah, let's start like that. We're on the draw. Can we take down the monster of the format? Well, I mean, we'll keep this. This hand, the bad news is, could get Ragavan snowballed. Good news is, I mean, we got the Vial, we got the Removal Spell, we got the Chalice. We have a lot of the pieces that we want. Bonus, Fire Bluff. No monkey, please. All right, no monkey, opponent. Gonna draw a card, sure. I mean, the real question is next turn. Fortified Beach, Reveal Valiant Veteran, play the Vial. Opponent lets it go. The real question is next turn. If we stick the Chalice on one, like if they play Ledger Shredder and we get to Chalice on one, whew. So I guess the question is, do we run out the Chalice into a counter spell here? Take up the Vial. Ooh, it'd be so good if we got it down. They might be thinking about going after our Vial, actually. Fortified Beach. I'm so confused. Why is our opponent stopping here? What do they have? Fire Ice? Fortified Beach. Reveal the Valiant Veteran. Just avoid. Counter it if you can. If not, then uh, GG's hopefully. The thing is, it's hard for our opponent to leave in many counters against our deck. Like, we got Aether Vile. We got Cavern of Souls. It's not like counters are actually that good against our main game plan. So I don't know how many, like, spell pierces or counters our opponent would even leave in. But then you get punished by the Chalice if it's sticks. We're playing like a prison deck at the moment almost. It's funny how many people hate Chalice. Chalice is like uh, such a such a fair card <laughs> that punishes people for being too greedy. If you're gonna play Dragon Raid Channel or Ragavan on Holy Heat, like every one drop from Modern Horizons, shouldn't there be shouldn't there be a card that can be like, hey, maybe you should not do that. <laughs> play a diversity of threats in your deck. And that's wow, okay. So opponent. Did leave in some counters after much deliberation, spell snares, cracks, misty rainforest. Well, this is definitely going to make things harder since our opponent can still cast spells. We were hoping for the our opponent can't cast spells win. Opponent passes. Thankfully, Vile's nice. Take up the Vile. Another Chalice would be sweet. Must be quadruple queuing over there. <laughs> Taking a long time for every action. Like, the Spell Pierce was pretty obvious, but it took our opponent like two minutes to, <laughs> to actually cast it. Opponent has returned. We take up our Aether Vile. More Janus. Do we want to run anything out so we can Vile Veteran into play? Question is, do we want to hard cast a Siege Veteran or do we just... Just wait until we can vial it in. All right, Hollowed Fountain untapped. I think we're gonna wait. Let's just pass. Since we know our opponent left counters in, <laughs> just running out this uh, Siege Veteran into a potential counter feels bad. Opponent, Mishra's Bobble. And cracks it. 
Flooded Strand also cracks it. Alright, a little, little mini Merc died. I mean, we can Brutal Cathar it. It's also small enough we can Ajano it, which is nice. But it's only got three cards in hand. We might actually not be in that bad of shape here. I guess they're redrawing for the bobble, so they're gonna go back up to four cards, but I don't feel like we're in horrible shape. Opponent passes, well, Ether File. Put a Valiant Veteran into play. Lightning Bolts. Okay, tick up to three. Champion of the Perished. Oh, but we want to get the Siege Veteran down too. We could play the Jano. If we have Jano, we can just dump our hand. That might be worth it. Yeah, let's do it. So play a Jano. Play Champion of the Perished. Brutal Cathar to get rid of the Merc Tide. Siege Veteran. Grow the Champion of the Perished. Counter on the Champion of the Perished. Trying to get it outside of at least something outside of Bolt Rage past the turn. And I guess this makes sense too, because it means if we draw another land, we can value a veteran and we still have an Ajano in hand, which our opponent is probably not going to expect now that we played one. If the Merc Tide, if they kill the Brutal Cathar and get back the Merc Tide, at least it's only a 1-1 only a one -one, or a 3-3 three -three rather. It's only a 3-3. Three -three. That's a, as small as a Merc Tide region can get. Fair Merc Tide if there is such a thing. Opponent. Unholy Heat to kill the Siege Veteran. Passes. Well, we'd like to draw action, but a land is not the absolute end of the world. Ether Vial is actually the... <laughs> the single worst thing that we could draw here. Well, go to combat, go attacking. Is there a way we get double blown out? Like, they kill this, get the mer... Yeah, all right. Now nah, we got the Ajana, we'll be fine. Well, go attacking. Abrades to get back the Merc Tide. Takes the beats. Well, yeah, Ether Vial was the one thing we did not want to draw. Literally the one thing we did not want to draw, a boner done taps. It's like drawing a land, but it's a land that doesn't let us activate Valiant Veteran, but it fetches. Yeah, I mean, that is, that is the nightmare. The Valiant Veteran, wow, that, yeah, that Aether File was like, oh, the one thing that allowed all this to happen. Oh, well, we're gonna need to draw something good. Deck. Magic gods. Well, stay on three. Take it up. Unsettled Mariner. Yeah, I think we're just, I think we're just dying. Oh no, and it's resident iteration. Draws a Dragon Rage Channeler. This game would have went a lot differently had that chalice stuck. All right, and another Merc Tide. Well, okay, so opponent awoke from their slumber and decided to play a little magic. They got there eventually. We just, we couldn't stick the hate card. I mean, we have a lot of hate cards. We just couldn't, couldn't find them in time. Run it back. We're on the play this game. Can we stick one of our hate cards? I mean, this hand's actually kind of sweet. This hand's actually super sweet. We got the Rip and the Chalice. And we get the Esper Sentinel, so if our opponent deals with a hate card, at least we get to draw a card. We get the Constellation Prize of getting to draw a card. Flooded Strand, crack it. Planes and Esper Sentinel, go. Opponent uh, adapts. Let's just tap out for something, opponent. Let's just tap out. Steam Vents untapped. Dragon Rage Shanala. We draw Valiant Veteran while Cavern on Soldier. Chalice on one. Pass the tur. Good start. We got the Chalice down. We do kind of want one more land. This Chalice does mean we don't get to Aether Vial this game. I mean, Chalice and Rest in Peace would be sweet. Mishra's Bobble, are we paying the one? They are. So, opponent Bobbles, surveils away Ragavan. Cracks a Bobble, takes a peek. I mean, this should mean we're in the clear to slam this rest in peace, right? Opponent draws a card. Rest in peace? All right, hate cards assembled. No one drops, no graveyards. We gotta be able to, we gotta be able to do something from here, right? Those are our two single best cards against this deck opponent. Explosives on zero. Let's us draw. Okay, so they're gonna try to get rid of the chalice. All right, that makes sense. That frees some of their spells at least. Passing. Express, so they're gonna wait on the engineered explosives. Finds a land, plays the land. Champion of the Perished. Well, oh, it would have been nice to draw land. Play a Valiant Veteran. Get in for two. Opponent untaps. Passes. Play a Jano. So how does this go wrongest? So our opponent cracks this to free the one drops. Lightning bolts this, blocks this. Let's just play a Siege Veteran. Uncounterably. Go to combat. All right, opponent's gonna blow the chal uh, blow up the chalice. 
Okay, we will put a counter on the Asper Sentinel. All right, bolts the Asper Sentinel. So something we do have to be a little concerned about is Fury. Well, there's an ether vial. Opponent takes their beats down to 13. Yeah, Fury could be a blowout because we don't actually get token replacements because of our rest in peace. Totally worth it. The rest in peace is totally worth it, but it is worth keeping that in mind. But I mean, Merc Tide shut down. Unholy Heat's gonna be powered down. So we do have a lot of good things going for us. Opponent considers. Unholy Heat's to, okay. Kill the Siege Veteran. Lightning Bolts. All right, so opponent has wrathed their board. We draw oh, another Vile. Yeah, the Vials aren't great here. These Vials were, were very, very not good draws. Well, play Champion of the Perished. Esper Sentinel. Grow the Champion. Play Ether Vial. We either gotta get the Ether Vial down now or just give up on ever using it. <laughs> it's gonna be too late if we don't do it now. Still not great on turn six, but about it. How much more removal do you have, friend? About it passes. Well, take up the Vial. Brutal Cathar is nice. We do like that. Yeah, let's Unsettled Mariner uncounterably. Keep the Soldier Taxes stacked up as much as possible. Okay, gonna braid the champion of the parish, pay the one. Surveils away a Raghavad. Well, we will play another Aether Vial past the turn. There's the land, getting closer to the Furies. I mean, we've gone through a lot of removal. How much more removal can our opponent possibly have? I guess we know the answer is a ton, but... Well, take up the Vials, take up the Vials. Draw a champion of the parish. Get in for two. We will pass. We can put everything into play at instant speed. We're kind of hoping that our opponent goes, wow, my God, okay. Oh my goodness, all right, so opponent, a braid number 40. <laughs> gonna kill the Esper set, no, they're gonna pay two. Yep. All right, let's see what they got. Ledger Shredder. Expressive iteration. Oh, this is our turn to do some damage. Hopefully opponent gets to her knife. Discards a counter, opponent gets to surveil. I don't think we win here, but we should have a, boy, it's gonna be, it's gonna be close. Opponent's really gonna need the fury. Opponent finds a land, plays it, tapped. Passes, well, ether vial. Put a champion of the parish into play. Valiant veteran. Grow some of the dorks. Untap. Vial's going up. Vial's going up. Ooh, Unsettled Mariner is actually excellent. Ether Vial. I mean, we're just going for it. Brutal Cathar. Get rid of the Ledger Shredder. Go to combat. Attack. So the way we lose, the way we lose is Anger of the Gods. Anything but that, we should win this turn. We even beat a Fury, I think. Did we do it? Did we take down the best deck in Modern? I don't know if anyone plays Anger of the Gods anymore. Oh my God, spin it to win it. Oh, they gotta find a sweep. Finds an unholy heat, not super effective. Engineered explosives on two. That's not enough though, is it? Oh, I guess it keeps our opponent alive, doesn't it? Because they can chump block. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, but we drew a Valiant Veteran. Does that change things? Go to combat. Attack with everything. That was an absurdly good draw for our opponent. Opponent blocks. Blows up the twos. Oh no, this doesn't matter. That's still lethal. Yes! Soldiers taking down the best deck in modern. Oh, that was so good. Okay, maybe this deck's kind of sweet. Maybe this deck's kind of sweet. Much more about nothing time. Doing some more, ugh. Oh, I'm so tempted to keep this. <laughs> Doing some more uh, soldier, chalice soldiers in modern. How angry will you be if I keep this, chat? You know what, we're keeping it. So it's a good one lander, right? If we draw a single land, our hand is good. If we draw two lands, the hand is great. And we do have two one drops, so it's not like we're doing nothing on turn one. The question is, do we play Esper Sentinel? It's counterintuitive to not lead on Champion of the Parish to scale it. And we get punished if we draw a land, because then we're gonna wanna play like that. Alia, but, uh, all right, Cavern on Soldier. Yeah, we're gonna do it, as per Sentinel. I don't know if this is right or not. This increases our odds of drawing a card, and drawing a card increases our odds of hitting our second land, and drawing a second land increases our odds of winning this game. That's the line of reasoning. Opponent, Affinity. Here's a Mem Knight, sure. This as per, oh boy, all right. As per Sentinel's doing nothing, opponent passes. Well, okay, Champion of the Perished. 
there any reason to play Chalice on one? Or Chalice on zero? Or should we wait and try to play it on one? Would have been a lot better last turn, but let's run it out on zero. Ship the turd. Well, no land yet. Why? Why did you tell me to keep this, chat? Come on, YouTube. Why? I blame you. Oh, you shouldn't have goaded me into keeping the one lander. Opponent. Well, they're gonna be able to start dropping some big boys if they have them. Spring leaf drum. Hey, we get to draw a card. Land, please. Oh my God, it's another S person. Okay. Oh, that's not exactly what we were hoping for. Opponent, one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, they can start casting thought monitors and whatnot next turn. Opponent, shadow sphere. Land off the top. Esper Sentinel, all right, Esper Sentinel number two, grow the champion of the perished. Maybe all we need is one land. <laughs> all part of the plan. Down to 18 temporarily. They do have the Shadow Sphere. Well, let's see what those last few cards are. This is where Affinity can really start to snowball with a bunch of artifacts. That's where they can start dropping the, the free Affinity creatures. And doing Urza Saga stuff. Urza Saga. Cranial plating. All right, well, that does get us a, wow. Okay, when I just said no no fear, I guess I want to put it on the Ornithopter and hit us for a ton, which makes sense. So we found a land, but we're taking a lot of damage. Opponent hits us for seven. I mean, we could just die next turn. Well, there's a planes. We will play a Valiant Veteran. Hit you for as much as we can. These Brutal Cathars are gonna have to carry. So hopefully we don't die this turn. Oh, uh, the problem is the combo of Shadow Sphere cranial blading is really, really, really bad for us. That is a bad combination because even so we can like answer the Ornithopter. Oh, sweet mother. OK, yeah. All right. Sure. Sure. That is that is lethal. All right. Well, cranial plating. Good magic card. Two Cathar commandos in. And then maybe just March of Otherworldly Light? Is Chalice even worth it? It feels a bit slow. We already have one, uh, Lavinia. Yeah, maybe we just go down the Chalices. Go down maybe a, th well, maybe an Unsettled Mariner. They don't really target our stuff. One land, one keep. Honestly, it wasn't really the land that was the problem there. Although I guess if we had drawn more lands, maybe we could have raced. The real problem is uh, double cranial blading. All right, we get to play first. Eh, we'll try this. Two Champion of the Parish. We don't have much disruption. We don't have any disruption. Not that we're an especially disruptive deck, but two Champion of the Parishes is a pretty fast start. All right, Fortified Beachhead, untapped, and Champion of the Parish, go. Soldier number one. The real question's gonna be, do we play Thalia or play another Champion of the Parish? This game, no more lands, no moss. <laughs> the opposite of last game where we really needed a land. This game, we just do not need more siege veteran eh? well maybe we just give up on the second champion of the parish for now flooded strand crack it thin the deck yeah i mean i think we got to play thalia play the thalia grow the champion of the parish hit you for two this could slow our opponent down a bit all right two mana shadow sphere sure opponent oh, passes oh brutal there is very nice all right mutable run out the siege veteran Grow the champion of the perished. Grow the Thalia. Hit you for six. Well, now I kind of like where we're at. Next turn, lean champion and brutal Cathar and hit our opponent for a lot of damage. And opponents only got three artifacts. They're not at the go off stage yet. Oh, Stony Silence would be so good. I don't know if there's enough artifact decks to make it worth it. Another another untapped artifact land is a little scary. It means free frog mites if they got them. I wonder with grinding station being a deck now, I wonder if Stony Silence could be worth it. Could that be a sideboard card again it would be game ending in this matchup like stony silence here our opponent just loses mere enforcer passes oh Janu. i think we just go for it play the land play the champion we're just we're going all in we're going all in champion of the parish grow the dork brutal cathar get rid of the mere enforcer grow the dorks this is Jano's actually going to be huge, I think. Growth Alia hit you for a ton. Five, nine, ten, eleven. Pun be going to one. But that went really well. The trick with the Jano is we can use it to kill our own creature. So if our opponent manages to like get a big life linky mirror enforcer or something, we can swing out, channel the Jano to kill whatever it blocked to fizzle the life gain and win with the rest of the creatures, even if we can't kill our opponent's creature. Maybe we go down the Unsettled Mariners. Affinity is just not a deck that targets. 
Harbin is interesting. That's another way we can swing past a big board full of artifact creatures. What about Sky Strike Officer? Probably a little slow. Run it like that. Can we do it with Affinity on the play? That's gonna be the challenge. We'll see if it's enough. Another colored source for Lavinia would be sweet. Lavinia is actually kind of interesting. If an opponent casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, counter it. Uh, that essentially means that it stops a lot of affinity stuff, like that mirror enforcer and whatnot. If our opponent has full affinity, they can't choose to pay mana for it. All right, runs out of welding jar. Passes. All right, well, flooded strand. Eh, this is gonna hurt a bit, but I think it's worth it. Hollowed fountain, untapped. Esper Sentinel go. Also, this Cathar Commando could end up being very relevant. Dark steals Citadel for our opponent. Although the Welding Jar, I guess, kind of gets in the way. All right, Cranial Plating, we get to draw a card. Valiant Veteran passes. Oh, this is so close. So what do we play? Valley attacks some stuff. Lavinia locks down some stuff. Well, we're definitely getting in for one. Hit you with Esper Sentinel. We also have to play the Jano if we want a Lavinia. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we're gonna wait a turn and just play Thalia, I think. Run out the Thalia past the turn. I think this is better this turn. The other issue is, let's say our opponent has like a, a Mirror Enforcer in hand. They're in a position now. Oh my God, we would have countered that. They're in a position now where they, they'd be able to pay mana for it. Although Frogmite is a thing that the Lavinia would have locked down. Opponent. Thalia is a good blocker against ground creatures. Thought cast. We chose very wrong. Lavinia would have also shut that down. Some mistakes may have been made. Ornitha, oh, Lavinia would have shut that. Oh my goodness, the Lavinia would have been absurd. Listen, maybe, maybe we made a mistake there. It's possible. Oh, that whole turn, we would have stopped with Lavinia. Wait, they're still, okay, they equip to the Ornithopter. Well, we draw Brutal Cathar, which isn't bad. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think we gotta take the hit this turn, though. I think we have to play the Jano. Now we'll play the Lavinia. Go to combat, hit you with Thalia. Actually, I don't even think we attack. Let's just pass. So this should shut down the affinity stuff. Minus Thought Monitor. Oh, it would have been so good last turn. Has Thought Monitor. That was the minus. That was the one that we can actually stop. I mean, it obviously worked out poorly to play the Lavinia and of Thalia. I wonder if that was incorrect or if it just worked out poorly. Like at the time, Thalia hates on a lot of stuff. Oh god, and a Shadow Sphere. We get to draw a card. Yeah, now I think we actually just die. We actually just die to the Flyers. We can Brutal Cathar stuff, but it doesn't, it's not gonna actually, actually be enough to matter. Wow. Opponent gets it, it's us, down to seven. We draw a Muta Vault. Is there any way we can get out of this? Is it even possible? I don't think it is. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Play Esper Sentinel. Go to combat attack. I mean, we should have our opponent locked out of playing, out of playing most things in the future, but I guess I need to turn my phone off. It <laughs> will not stop beeping. We should have our opponent locked out of playing things in the future, but I don't think there is a future. Get in with the Thalia. The opponent passes. So we can use Cathar Commando to stay alive for the turn, hopefully, but it doesn't kill the thing because of welding jar. So it's a, a very temporary, very temporary solution to our issue. It's literally just gonna eat a welding jar in fog. And then I don't know what we can do next turn. Oh, actually, Hmm. All right, they equip. Goes to combat. Attacks. Yeah, this welding jar is going to win the game for our opponent here. Uh, so we have to Cathar Commando. Blow up the Ornithopter, but not really. So we got to draw another Cathar Commando, I guess. That would buy us a turn. So opponent sacks. The Ornithopter lives. We drop to four. Brutal Cathar doesn't do it. Yeah, it's got to be March of Otherworldly Light. Oh, pfft. But yeah, that double triple does it then. Valiant Veteran and dead. Lesson of that game, I guess we should have played the Lavinia. Still not sure if that was incorrect at the time. Like if you look at an affinity deck list, so we're thinking, which one do we play on turn two? Do we play Lavinia? Do we play Thalia? If you look at the deck list, like Thalia is very good against this part of the deck. And then Lavinia is very good in that scenario against specifically Frogmite and Thoughtcast. We were pretty sure our opponent didn't have any Midnight or Ornithopter, so they would have played him already. Pretty much those 
those two cards. The downside of Lavinia there is our opponent had two lands in like five artifacts. So if our opponent one or four or something like that, maybe it was three, three lands and four artifacts, whatever, like something like that. So the problem was our opponents uh, like Sojourners Companions and Mirror Enforcers wouldn't be free free. So our opponent on that one turn in specific would be able to be like, oh, pay a mana, play my Mirror Enforcer if they knew they had to get it out of their hand because of Lavinia. When on the following turn, they'd probably have enough artifacts that they wouldn't have that option and Lavinia would just hard lock, hard lock those cards out of our opponent's hand. But the way it played out, our opponent's hand was Frogmite and Thoughtcast, which are like literally not, not these cards. It was the Frogmite and Thoughtcast. It was literally the cards that lined up really well with Thalia and really poorly against uh, Lavinia. So interesting situation for sure. Very interesting. Wrong soldier, I guess. Much brew about nothing time. We are playing some more Chalice Vile Soldiers. Ujin Gotha, eh? Ah, this hand looks fine. Champion of the Parish is X2 into Lavinia. Arid Mesa. That kind of makes me want to play the Vile. Ooh, Thalia. Yeah, we're definitely going to play Vile. So let's just play the Plains, play the Ether Vile. We could play the Champion of the Perished. With our opponent having mana up, though, they can just bolt it end step, and then we get nothing from it. This hopefully lets us take up Vile. Ooh, Steam Vents, okay. This hopefully lets us take up Vile and then maybe play Thalia. Sprite Dragon. Well, Thalia's going to be helpful. Down to 19. Passes. Well, take up the vial to one. Hollowed Fountain. Well, play the Muta Vault. Put Champion of the Parish into play. Play Athalia. See if we can slow things down a smidge and pass the turn. Sprite Dragon can definitely get huge, although the Thalia is hopefully going to, hopefully going to make it a little harder for our opponent to just really grow it. Or eat a removal spell. Opponent's down to 15. One of the upsides of this deck is our mana is pretty pain free. Lava Dart kills the Thalia. And Lightning Bolt kills the champion of the Perished. Okay. None of this is good for us. Yeah, it's a lot of removal. Down to 16. Well, keep taking up the vial. Valiant Veteran's not bad. Let's see. Fortified Beachhead. Reveal the champion of the Perished. Play champion of the Perished. Valiant Veteran to grow the Champion of the Perished. Violin Lavinia to grow the Champion of the Perished. Best turn. Well, I mean, that's essentially what we have at this point. <laughs> Our hand is on the battlefield. Will it be enough? So Lavinia does stop the Lava Dart, which is something more sprite dragons. I guess it doesn't keep our opponent from casting it. Gonna need to draw some removal at some point, which is basically just brutal Kazar. Lightning Bolt's the champion of the perished again. Ugh, so much removal. Yeah, we're losing this race. The opponent goes to combat. Hits with both. Oh boy. Brutal Cathar. Off the top, please. Well, Vile. Ticking up. Siege Veteran. I mean, Siege Veteran's not bad. I don't think this wins us the race, though. All right, so we will Aether Vile. Put the Siege Veteran into play. Fire up the Muta Vault. Go to combat. Put a counter on Lavinia. Go attacking. Yeah, odds are heavily in favor of us being dead. The thing is, they can still cast the Lava Dart. So they can still cast it. We'll just hold the land. I mean, we just, we die here. They can still cast it, so it's still going to trigger the Sprite Dragons, even though it's going to get countered. Lavinia doesn't say you can't cast spells if you don't spend any mana. It says if you cast them, they get countered, which means this Lava Dart is, oh, yeah, okay. Well, we're just dead in multiple ways. Opponent grows the sprite dragons, grows the sprite dragons. Yeah, turn two sprite dragon. Back by all the bolts in the world. We're gonna do a bit of work. Under, okay, underworld breach, sure. All right, so we're just dead. Underworld breach is really taken off in modern. Core Firewalker coming in. This is a matchup where Chalice should be absurd, right? It should be really, really good. Core Firewalker in. I think we're gonna cut the, La the Lavinia's. They just don't do enough here. We really want rest in pieces, but we also might need removal. Maybe go like three rest in pieces in a march. 
two marches. Yeah, let's try it like that. I mean, if there was ever a matchup for Chalice, it is against this deck specifically. Well, let's see how it goes with us on the play. Like, we have a lot of good things for this matchup. Sentinel's good, Thalia's good, Unsettled Mariner's good, Chalice is great, Rest in Peace also pretty good. So we have a lot of good uh, good tools. On the other hand, Pony can just make big creatures really quickly. But it is nice to finally have a matchup where Chalice of the Void is a, is a real card. It's been pretty hit or miss. I'm honestly not sure Chalice is worth it in the main deck in this deck. Maybe it's just the matchups we've played. We haven't played against Rhinos. We haven't played against Living End. It is very good against Murktide. It should be very good. Oh, I mean, I think it is very good against this deck if we draw it. But then other matchups, it's, <laughs> it's just bad. So I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it or not. I don't know if it'd be better in the sideboard with more soldiers in the main deck or like more removal in the main deck. Right now, our only removal spell is is Brutal uh, Cathar. Well, I mean, we're going to keep this. Play a Blains and as per Sentinel go. Sand is pretty good at slowing down our opponent and Dragon Rage Shanala passes. Play the Mutavault. Play the Thalia. Pass the turn. Gonna try to make things hard on our opponent. Might have been wrong to play the Mutavault there. Might have been better to play a different land so we could champion Unsettled Mariner next turn. All right, opponent's going to Lava Dart the Thalia. We draw a Brutal Cathar. Opponent gets to Surveil. Leaves it on top. Yeah, it's been interesting to see Underworld Breach develop into just like an ultra staple, essentially. A bonus passes. We draw. Siege Veteran. Well, maybe we just do that then. Let's Cavern on Soldier. Siege Veteran growing the Esper Sentinel is not the worst. Uh, Siege Veteran. Go to combat. Counter on the Esper Sentinel. Hit you for two. I mean, we're kind of drawing an extra card every turn. It's going to be very hard for opponent to pay. Soul Scar Mage. Lightning Bolt to get rid of the Esper Sentinel. Well, we get to draw a card. We do lose our Esper Sentinel. Where's our Chalice? We could use that Chalice. Another Siege Veteran. We also get a token out of the deal, which is kind of sweet. Mills Prismatic Ending. Okay. We get a Soldier Token. Passing. We draw another Esper Sentinel. <laughs> Not bad, not bad. Okay, so Hollowed Fountain, Unsettled Mariner. Get the taxes going. Esper Sentinel number two. It is awkward we have not managed to get down this, <laughs> this champion of the perished. Counter on the Esper Sentinel. No attacks this turn. So our opponent's stuff costs one more to target us or our permanents. And they gotta pay two or we draw. And if they kill something, we get a, a token. Rest in Peace would be great. Rest in Peace or Chalice, that might be the most impressive part of this, is we didn't draw either of our Haymaking sideboard cards. Cracks a Scalding Tarn. Sacred Foundry untapped down to 15. Only three cards in hand. Rest in Peace would also make us less scared of Underworld Breach. Breach Dragon Rage Channeler can do a bit of work. Uh, opponent. Path to Exile. They gotta pay a lot here. Is this to get rid of, okay, trying to get rid of the Esper Sentinel. Well, let's see if they pay. They gotta pay one for Unsettled Mariner or it's countered. And then two for Esper Sentinel or we draw. Wow, well, all right, opponent's gonna pay the full price, sure. I mean, this is fine. And then we get a land. I mean, pretty soon we're gonna start dealing damage here. Yes, we'll grab a Plains. No attacks. Another land isn't the absolute best. Champion of the Perished. Siege Veteran number two. Grow the Champion of the Perished. Fortified Beachhead. Are we getting in with the Mutavault? Yeah, probably. Fire up the Mutavault. Go to combat. Counter on Unsettled Mariner. Mutavault. Do some attacking. Takes it to nine. Your go. I mean, opponent needs something pretty good here. We're pretty close to having lethal, especially with a removal spell for next turn. Well, this went a lot better than game one, that's for sure. All right, Manamorphose. Opponent's gonna do what they can do. So free spell number one, Manamorphose. Gets to surveil, leaves, ooh, leaves it on top. All right, so they want whatever, whatever they saw. I can't imagine they have like an Anger of the Gods or something. That would be, that would be wild and de <laughs> devastating. That would just beat us, but this doesn't seem like the kind of deck that would play that. All right, they left presumably the expressive iteration on top. So opponent gonna do some drawing of magic cards. Gets to surveil again, leaves it on top again. We do want to close this out before our opponent manages to Underworld Breach us. Lava Dart. Doesn't seem great. I mean, I guess it's fine, but 
Lava darts our face. <laughs> gonna get countered unless you pay one. Unsettled Mariners, are, wow, they're gonna pay the one. Okay, we just win, right? We gotta just win. We gotta have lethal here. Mishra's Bobble, sure. I mean, opponents casting their stuff, but... Well, I guess they don't know that we have the Brutal Cathar. Wow, so many one drops. Yeah, Chalice, unless they find Prismatic Ending, Chalice is so good against them. Gets the Bobble countered by the... Unsettled Mariner just hits on so many things. About it. Wow, now they have to... Oh, this is easy game. Opponent hits us, they have to attack. Sure, we'll take the three. But now, we untap. Our opponent's tap. There's the Chalice. We're not even gonna show it, though, because we just win here. Snipe the Soulscar Mage, grow the dorks, fire up the Mutavault, and opponent scoops it up. Okay, so that went much better. We could see our taxing spells actually have a, a huge effect there. I think we might need this other March of Otherworldly Light. Let's bring in the March. All of our cards are so good. Oh, uh, let's get on one Brutal Cathar run out like that. Show us a Chalice. Turn two Chalice. Oh, we needed to be more specific. We got the Chalice, but we do not have the lands. Wow, okay. We got the Chalice and we got the Rest in Peace. We have our hate cards. Will they be fast enough? Opponent, Steam Vents. Monastery Swift Spear. Gets and hits us. Down to 19. We draw. March of Otherworldly Light. Is there any chance we're pitching the Unsettled Mariner to kill this? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna play the Ajano just in case. There is a there is some percent chance that we want a March of Otherworldly Light. A bonus, Steam Vents. If they play Sprite Dragon, March of Otherworldly Light looks even more, even more exciting. A bonus gets and hits us. Down to 18. Soul Scar Mage. Soul Scar Mage. Oh, this is real bad. March of Otherworldly Light. Exile. Kill the Soul Scar Mage. Untap. Cavern. Soldier. Chalice on one. I mean, we have the turn to Chalice, but is it just going to be too slow? Because our opponent can still cast their spells just to trigger prowess. So that's the that's the issue we have here. Like, even if we're countering their spells, they can still get the prowess triggers and they do triple prowess one drops on the on the play. Goes to combat, gets and hits us. Down to 16 and passes. Brutal Cathar is interesting. Is it worth shocking ourselves for Brutal Cathar? I mean, probably. Hollow Fountain untapped. Run out the Brutal Cathar. Uncounterably. Gone after the Soul Scar. I mean, our opponent really shouldn't have removal that can kill it now, thanks to the chalice. Opponent. We definitely can't block. Opponent passes. Wow. Okay. We get to flip. Well, we will play a rest in peace. Get rid of the graveyards. Do we want a chalice on zero just to flip back around? Or do we hold it in case this one gets blown up? I bet our opponent did not sideboard for the chalice. Let's chalice on zero. Pass the turn. I mean, we got our hate cards. We have drawn them all. So Brute flips. We get rid of the Swift Spear. Threats dealt with for now. Now we could use a clock <laughs> before our opponent draws a way to blow up the Chalice. Although they might not have a way to blow up the Chalice because they didn't see it in game one and game two. So they might not know. Ugh, another Fortified Beachhead. Well, get in with the Brute. Hit you for three. Fortified Beachhead, tapped, pass the turn. Come on, Chalice, come on, Chalice, come on, Chalice. Hold, hold, opponent, land, passes. Oh my God, another land. This is the worst running. But maybe the Chalices will be enough. All right, Cavern on Soldier, pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Mountain passes. Give us a threat. March of Otherworldly. Even more removal. Well, we have enough mana that March can kill anything, which is nice. If our opponent actually draws a threat, they can resolve down to seven. And Pat, wow, is this chalice just gonna go all the way? <laughs> this is like the dream when you play, oh my God. This chalice better go all the way because we are running horribly. Get in with the Moon Rage Brew. Well, Fortified Beach had tapped past the turn. Opponent passing. <laughs> Come on, hold. Thalia. Well, go to combat attack. Hit ya. Once we get in this hit, it becomes very good because oh, now our opponent can't even target it. And we drew a Thalia. We'll run out the Thalia uncounterably. Play the land. Pass the turn. Wow. We have been up and down and all around about these chalices. And this, this was the chalice dream. Man, I'm, oh, the painful manamorphos, but that is a spell you can cast. <laughs> that is legal, making white mana. I don't know how they get out of this though. White mana can let them kill a chalice, but even if they kill it, like what do they do about this? <laughs> Barby, chill. Okay, opponent does kill the chalice, but it's just too late. They found the answer. 
Bearby, Bearby, I'm doing a video, bud. They found the answer, but yeah, we get the GGs. What do you see out there? I, okay, I'll take you out. Let me, let me finish, <laughs> let me finish winning with the chalice, Bear. Do you not appreciate the power of the chalice? I mean, the Thalia means that they can't kill the Brutal Cathar with a lightning bolt here, which is big. Go attacking. Wow. That is chalice power. Chalice has been very hit or miss, but wow, when it hits, it wins the game by itself. That was about, we mulliganed, and that was about as bad as one of our draws could be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lands, which is so many for a 21 land deck. One threat, we drew a Brutal Cathar, and then the very last turn, we drew a Thalia. So we had a single creature that entire game, because uh, we pitched the Unsettled Mariner for removal, and Chalice of the Void was able to get the job done, so. Mm, so sweet. So why don't we learn this week about Chalice Vile Soldiers in Modern, and overall, record wise we went three and three with the deck went two and three in a league and then decided want to keep playing the deck so did a two-player match ended up winning that one so three and three overall and i think the deck it felt pretty good we played a lot of really close games i think we had we kind of blew out control for a win and then the one match that didn't show up was a money pile deck with all the evoke elementals and teferi and ren that matchup oh my god it was it was miserable our deck does not do very well against like fury ephemerate fury solitude ephemerate solitude so that one was a blowout but all of our other matchups they were really really close and we got to see some really interesting three game matches uh, that was just really fun good clean tribal magic so i think the deck it seems pretty powerful as we talked about in the intro the biggest upside to soldiers is they are really disruptive and we saw that during our games we saw thalia slowing down opponents we saw lavinia maybe not being as good as it should have been oh that affinity game i'm still thinking over that affinity play when we played thalia over lavinia i actually was so interested in that play that i put a poll up on my twitter to see what other people thought the right play was and it ended up being almost exactly a 50 50 split so apparently it is a very close play Obviously, with hindsight, we should have played Lavinia. It would have won us that match. Uh, and the Thalia didn't do anything. But at the time, I thought it was really close. And everyone else seems to agree it's really close as well. So Lavinia even better than it looked. It does do some really good things in certain matchups. Unsettled Mariner was really helpful a lot of the time. The card that is maybe most interesting to me is Chalice, and I really don't know, I really don't know about Chalice in this deck. So we got to see Chalice range from literally game winning, like look at our last match against Prowess, where we played a Chalice and we ran horribly. We drew a single Brutal Cathar, and we essentially went all the way with that Brutal Cathar, as our opponent just could not do anything through the Chalice. So we saw Chalice be really game winning in like one or two matchups. We also saw it be a card that we sideboarded out a ton. Like it was the first card to come out in a lot of matchups. And then we also had a match that I think it was the Money Pile match that didn't make the mid video, but we had a match where we chaliced on turn two, uh, chalice on one, and then proceeded to draw like three one drops and just lock our own deck out of the game and lose, which we probably would have lost anyway because Money Pile is just such a bad matchup for the deck. Uh, but we did see the downside of playing chalice on one in a deck full of one drops. So like, I think it's really interesting. I'm leaning towards moving Chalice to the sideboard next time I play the deck. I think my, uh, I don't know, I think the inconsistency of Chalice makes me want to put it in the sideboard and bring more soldiers into the main deck. We already have some soldiers in the sideboard, like Harbin or Sky Strike Officer, but one of the cool things about soldiers is they've been getting support for a long time. So there's actually a ton of soldiers in Modern, so we can add some spice in there, like Perimenant Captain seems really hilarious as a way to cheat more soldiers into play, and there's a bunch of other options as well so if you got ideas about four spicy soldiers that we could add to the deck or maybe we go like one harbin one sky strike officer a couple other one of soldiers if you got some ideas let me know in the comments because i think chalice in the sideboard more soldiers in the main deck or maybe just like chalice in the sideboard some removal in the main deck might be the way to go but anyway overall the deck it felt good but not great like it's good it grinds it does cool things it annoys people we got to see the chalice lock which oh my goodness Warms my heart to see Chalice actually locking someone out of the game in 2023. But we also got to see like uh, Fury, uh, Ephemera to Fury, like we're just, we're never beating that. That's just not happening for this deck. So the deck, good, but not great. It's fun. I like that it's got a lot of standard cards in it. So if you got standard soldiers, you can kind of put this together for not a ridiculous amount. Although I guess like Cavern and Ether Vial and Chalice are kind of expensive, but I like the deck overall. So let me know what you think about the deck. What soldiers would you add in the deck in the comments? And that has been our Much Improved for this week. So thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will talk to you soon.